Space is the final frontier, and like any frontier, danger and disaster are always along for the ride. Hi, I'm Dave Dooling, Education Director at the New Mexico Museum of Space History. In this story from space, we'll look at a once promising low-cost approach to getting experiments into space. The 1980s and 90s saw the rise of commercial space launch ventures as alternatives to costly space shuttle missions. One was the Conestoga series of launch vehicles started by Space Services Incorporated of America. It was started by David Hanna in 1980 and initially experimented with a rocket known as Percheron. It blew up on the launch pad. Hanna promptly turned to Mercury 7 astronaut Deke Slayton, who had left NASA in 1980 after running the shuttle landing test program. Slayton and SSI then looked at the Ares rocket developed by Space Vector Corporation. Ares used a surplus second stage from retired Minuteman ballistic missiles. But while the design was proven, the paperwork was not. Commercial space launches were the frontier for both business and the federal government. They managed to clear those hurdles, and on September 9, 1982, SSI launched the first commercial flight to space from Matagorda Island, Texas. In the frontier spirit, SSI named the rocket Conestoga 1, after the Conestoga wagons that pioneers took across the nation in the 1800s. And in a cautious engineering spirit, the payload was simple, a half-ton weight including 40 gallons of water. It soared almost 200 miles high and plummeted into the Gulf of Mexico as planned. SSI was purchased by EER Systems, and they plunged into new designs for Conestoga 2. This would be a family of vehicles that clustered existing caster rocket motors as needed to meet customer needs. The work was done under NASA's Commercial Centers for the Development of Space. The plan was three launches and five years for $85 million, an amazingly low price. But the Center for Space Transportation and Applied Research mismanaged the program, schedules slipped, and prices soared to $165 million. NASA tried killing Conestoga too, but Congress kept it alive for just one launch at a cost of $66 million. It was supposed to orbit a capsule filled with automated materials and biology experiments that would return to Earth after a few months in space, but it never got that far. On October 23, 1995, at NASA's Wallops Island Flight Facility, Conestoga 2's six caster motors pushed the rocket skyward. Just 40 seconds later, it ripped itself apart. Unexpected vibrations fooled the guidance system into making unnecessary course corrections. The rocket ran out of hydraulic fluid and it lost control. The Conestoga program was dead and EER left the launch business. It may have seemed like space word no instead of space word ho. And as heartbreaking as it was for all involved, management lessons helped shape today's highly successful commercial space market. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more stories from space.